Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Corey and this is CoreyWorks Lab. In this video, we're going to go from a pile of parts to my first working AI dev rig. So what is that? I want to build this computer to do some AI development and run some local large language models, mainly because I just want to learn about it. Um, I'm interested. I want to start messing around with doing some development with AI and to help me with that learning journey, I set a bit of a goal for myself to develop a AI home assistant, you know, Jarvis style, the cliche, I know, but it's going to be fun. So I'm new to this. You can follow along. I'm not the authority on it. I'm not an expert. I'm learning as I go. So you can follow along and see what it takes. So this is video one of that series and let's dive in. Okay, we'll run through the parts as I build this. And I got everything off Marketplace, starting with this Fractal Pop Mini case and this motherboard CPU RAM cooler combo. I just bought it all as a bundle. And it's the i7-10700 CPU, 16 gig of RAM with the cooler installed already. And this is a modest machine. It's not top of the line by any means, but it's enough for us to get going into this world of AI development. The power supply is an MSI 750 watt. And there I was plugging in the, the connections for the LEDs that are on this case. And then trying to do some cable management here, tuck everything away as neat as I can, just to get it all tucked away in the back here. So when you see it from the front, it looks nice and clean. Okay, now for the GPU, which is the most important part for running these LLMs. This is an MSI RTX 3060 with 12 gigs of VRAM, which is a modest amount, but it's enough for us to get going, probably look at upgrading in the future. And that's it, time for the money shot. Okay, it booted first try right into the BIOS. Really happy that all the parts worked considering I got them all off Facebook Marketplace. Enabled XMP profile on the memory to get the max speed out of the RAM. Then configured the boot sequence to make sure the USB drive with Omarchi uh, was selected as the priority boot device. Omarchi is a new Linux distribution created by DHH and it's based off Arc Linux. And Arc Linux is super lightweight and you only add the packages that you need so it can stay nimble. This comes with a lot of packages pre-installed, pre-configured, which is why I went with it. Okay, here we are in Omarchi. Isn't it beautiful? They got all these great themes in here. You can switch between the wallpapers by hitting Control, Windows key or Super key, they call it. Control, Super, Space. Changes through the wallpapers. There's also different themes. These are just the wallpapers with this theme, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, there's a ton to learn with Omar Chi and there's a bunch of information out there. If you're interested in me doing a video on it, uh, let me know. But I think the first thing we're going to do is change the scale here so it's easier for you to see. And then we're going to do an update. So this menu system, if you hit super alt space, it brings up this menu where you can look at all the apps and you can look at different manuals. I suggest reading this Omarchi manual to see all the key bindings and all the different apps that are installed. But we can do setup as well. So if we go to setup to monitors, everything is done through these config files. It's really hard to see here, I'll, I'll zoom in. But if we change this from auto to say 2.2 for scaling, and this text editor is NeoVim. It's what's used as default. And Vim takes a bit to learn. I'm more of a nano guy, uh, but I'm learning Vim. And it's a bit interesting when you 
try to figure things out here with going into insert mode by hitting insert key or I on your keyboard and then hitting escape to back out, then hitting colon to go into the command line, WQ is write and then quit. And as soon as we write and quit, oh, it didn't like 2.2, but it liked 2.4. So as soon as we quit, it updated the, the settings. So the next thing we're gonna do is update the system Come in here, enter the password. One of the beauty things with Omarchi is it just comes pre-installed with the things you need, like the NVIDIA drivers, Intel drivers for the GPUs. Everything just works. Switch to the new hotkeys. So in Omarchi 3.1 release, there's a hotkey change, which doesn't really matter if you're just learning it anyways, but you have the option to Keep the old hotkeys or switch to the new one. And we're gonna switch to the new one. Okay, now it's asking if we wanna reboot. Of course we do. Um, let's do that. And then we'll come back in and switch that monitor config. And then we're gonna get into installing the applications we want to start working with AI. Okay, it's rebooted and we're back in. I made the update to the monitors config so we don't keep getting that error about the scaling. Let's start looking at the apps for AI. Now, I'm gonna change the background here. I like this one actually. But if you hit super alt space, it brings up this menu, as you remember, and we go install. You can type in AI to filter down AI. And here's a bunch of apps that we can install that are pre-built in here for us to select from. Now there's other, obviously this is Linux, you can install whatever you want. This just makes it easy to access these ones. And they're very popular tools. So Claude Code, Cursor CLI, Gemini, OpenAI, Codex, Crush and OpenCode. Those are all different command line tools to interact with web or local models to do development on. And then LM Studio is a, a graphical user interface to interact with different models and download and test models. And Olama, which is where we're gonna start, is a server for running models on. And so we're gonna start there. And Olama is what's gonna run our local models and our other apps are gonna to connect to Olama to use those models. So we just select Olama, type in our password, and it starts downloading. Okay, and this was already downloaded before, so it just reinstalled, made sure everything was up to date. But now we have a llama on our machine. And so we can open up a command window and to do that, hit super enter. And you can open up as many as you want. And this is a tiling windows manager. So it doesn't open up windows that float on top of each other. It goes into this grid, which takes a bit to get used to, but it's actually pretty cool when you do get used to it. So we'll open up a couple commands here and you can switch between the windows with super and the arrow key or use your mouse, of course. And what we want to do is first export an environment variable for a llama host and host it on 0.0.0.0. And this allows us to connect to this Olama instance from outside machines, not just from within this local machine. And then if we type Olama serve, boom, it's running. It recognizes that we have 12 gigs of VRAM, it put us into low VRAM mode. Um, we are relatively low with this 12 gig, but should be enough to start messing around. And so we can do Olama pull to download models onto this computer. But what models do we want to download? Well, if we open a web browser with Windows key or super shift B, it'll open up a web browser. We can type in olama.com and search for models. We can go to olama.com forward slash library and see all these different models. So I've had good luck with Quen actually with running tools. And tools are what allow models to run different functions to interact with different applications. And so when we start looking at a local model helping us be a home assistant agent, 
it needs to interact with our home assistant server uh, to be able to interact with the devices and run functions and uh, have those tools to be able to do that. And I've found Quen has been pretty successful uh, doing that. So Quen 8B, we'll, uh, we'll download that one. So we can just paste that into here, hit enter. It's already downloaded on this machine. So now we can run it. And so you can do Olama run Quen 3 8B. And what we'll do is monitor our GPU load as we're doing that. And you can do that by hitting this button on the top right, or you can hit uh, Super Shift T. And we'll drag that down here. So now we can see that our GPU, we're using seven and a half gigs of the 12 gigs available to run this model. So now it's loaded up and we can send a message. What is the matrix? Okay, it's thinking. This is a thinking model. And you can see the GPU is taking the full load of running that LLM, which is what we want, which makes it way faster than trying to run this on the CPU. How awesome is that? So cool. We can resize this by holding the super key and the right mouse click and dragging it around. What I wanna do is connect to our TrueNAS server. So if you remember on the last video, I had open web UI running on TrueNAS. Let's go to the IP address and we have open web UI running on here. So we open that up and go into admin panel settings, connections, you can set up this Olama connection. And so we're connecting from another computer, the TrueNAS computer, to this new AI rig. So you just type in the IP address and with the port is 11434. Check the connection, we're good. We can see over here that it's verified. And now we can interact with the model from this web interface and you can select which model, and we only have the one running right now, and the only one available. But we can run it from here. What is the matrix? I don't know why I always type that in, but... It's a question that requires enough thinking to give it enough load to see how it's running. See, we're up to 8.3 gigabytes out of 12 now. So now you can interact with the local LLM running on your computer through this web interface, just like ChatGPT. The other thing we can do is download models right from this interface. So if you go to admin panel again, go to settings, and go to models, you see all the models that are installed and you can manage models here. You can select ones you want to delete or pull new ones from olama.com and you can click here to see what's available. That takes us back to where we were before in the Olama library. So I wanna download another one. I wanna download, where is it? Quen 3, 14B. So you can hit copy, go back into Open Web UI, paste it in there, pull the model. Now it's downloading. Awesome. So while it's doing that, let's jump over and install a couple other apps. So we're gonna leave this running here on desktop one and we can switch over to desktop two. You can do that by holding super and hitting the numbers on your keyboard as well. So we'll open up the install menu again, go to AI. And I wanna install Gemini, Gemini CLI. And I just found out about this not too long ago. This is an application that runs in the command line that lets you interact with the Google Gemini models. And it's free to use. And it gives you a very generous token limit that you can use with their Gemini 2.5 Pro model, which is a very powerful model. 
And what I'm thinking for this machine is we're gonna have some tools like this Gemini CLI that has access to very powerful cloud models, use that for doing some development, help build our AI agent with those tools that can run on the local models hosted through Olama. So we need a best of both worlds uh, situation here with cloud models and local models being accessed through this, this rig. So let's get that installing. And you open that in the command line. And the powerful thing about Gemini is that it can interact with the files on your computer. So typically you would open this up in a project folder and you can ask it, hey, what is this project doing? And it'll look through all the files in that project, explain it to you, and then you can use it to help you do the coding. And it'll actually make changes to the files if you want, of course, as you're coding through it. So super powerful. Okay, it's asking me to log in with my Google account. Everyone's got a Google account. So let's log in. Check your device. Let me see over here. I'm gonna say, yes, it's me. Get out of here. Yes, I wanna sign in. Success. Nice, let's flip back over using Super 2, and now we're in. Now we're running Gemini with access to the, the Gemini 2.5 Pro model. Hi. Didn't hit the key hard enough. Hello, I'm ready. What would you like me to do? So we won't get into it here right now, but this is ready to go for helping us with our project uh, development. Okay, that's it for this one. We got the AI rig built, we got the OS installed, and we got some core AI tools installed and ready to go. So in the next one, I'm gonna go deeper into open code and configuring that for local model use and cloud model use, and then push this machine to its limits to see how far we can go with these LLMs before we hit that 12 gig VRAM wall and then look at how we can optimize some settings to get the most out of this configuration. So thanks for watching this one and we'll see you in the next one.